welcome to Chuck's Diecast Car and Model Reviews. Today we're going to be taking a look at this car. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite cars actually. This is the Lotus Esprit Turbo. Uh, this particular one is made by AutoArt and is in 118 scale. I'm going to show you this model um, you know, in a pretty good detail because this model is uh, among the best ones that I actually own in terms of quality and detail. Um, it is very nicely done. Uh, for those of you who don't know anything about the Lotus Esprit, uh, it was designed in the mid-70s by Giorgetto Giugiaro, uh, who is of course one of the great car designers from the 60s all the way up to basically the 2000s. So uh, he's a uh, responsible for a great number of great cars including another one of my favorite cars which you can see the family resemblance to the uh, uh, BMW M1 uh, you can also see that I actually own a Giugetto Giugiaro design car it's in my garage right now and it is this it is the uh, Alfa Romeo GTV6 um, he also designed the Maserati Bora, even the Volkswagen Golf and original Scirocco, um, the Subaru SVX, even the Isuzu Impulse, if you know what that is. Uh, so yeah, he's definitely got a great track record for making some great cars. Um, this particular car, uh, of course, uh, was featured in the movie The Spy Who Loved Me, the Bond movie. Maybe that's why I like this car so much as well. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, this the Esprit is just uh, a car that I've always loved. Um, however, the original model of Esprit, which was in the Spy Who Loved Me movie, didn't quite have the uh, uh, oomph that the turbos did. Um, the original non-turbo Esprits. I think they had about something like 140 or 150 horsepower or something like that. It really wasn't befitting of a car that looked like this. Uh, but it still had exemplary handling. Uh, from what I understand, the stunt drivers for the movie The Spy Who Loved Me had a hard time driving this car to make it look like it's going fast. They couldn't get the you know the back end to slide out on or anything like that no matter how hard they tried so uh, so again that just goes to show you how good Lotus was in making a quality handling sports car uh, in the uh, late 70s or uh, that is when they stuck a turbo on there and that actually gave it more fitting amount of power um, you know f for its styling if you know what I mean uh, I took it up to about 210 horsepower I believe and believe me um, that was plenty for this car because it's made of fiberglass uh, it's super light uh, I actually rode in one that belonged to a friend of a friend of mine's and that sucker when you uh, stepped on it and the turbo kicked in it would fly um, and uh, so, you know, after that I was pretty much addicted, of course, and I had the opportunity to buy one about, I guess, about 11 or 12 years ago. It was at the Ferrari dealer. It was a trade-in, I believe, and the uh, dealership was, you know, they were actually going to offer me, you know, like... Uh, Ten grand for this car, and I didn't buy it because I ended up buying a house uh, that year. And you know, it's kind of—I probably still could have stretched and bought this car, and I regret it. But uh, as it is, uh, you know, I'll have to be happy with the model here. Okay. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this model. Um, again, the detail on this is fantastic. I mean. Uh, just uh, just for an example take a look at the wheel here I mean that that is beautiful you know that's a you know the BBS wheel with the you, know, you can see the 
for studs and the center cap and the, the bolts on there. This isn't, I don't think this is a single piece casting. I'm sure it's a multiple, multiple pieces here that makes up that wheel. Um, the, even the script on the old Goodyear's there looks fantastic. The uh, side marker light looks really good. You can see here the, uh, the door handle, um, it looks really, really nice. And the quality of the decals, again, uh, uh, exemplary. Uh, taking a look at the front here, again, no complaints. Well, I guess the only complaint I have is that the the uh, the headlights don't open, but still, it it looks really really good. The uh, um, the turn signals and the driving lights look uh, wonderful, and uh, so no complaints there. Even the uh, even the windshield wiper looks really good. Uh, but you take a look under the uh, front bonnet here, you can see, uh, well, very little space for anything except for that spare. I believe that spare is actually an old Wolf race wheel that the original non-turbo Esprit's used, uh, uh, you know, as their regular wheels. Um, these BBS's look okay. I mean, I've never been a fan of the basket weave wheels that... BBS had, but you know it still looks good. Uh, you can also see here the, uh, you know, the reservoir for the, uh, the brakes and the, the headlight washer as well. So uh, uh, good detail in there. Uh, if you take a look at the rear here, you'll see um, the uh, very cool Lotus script on the rear bumper. Um, the guy who I, or the Esprit that that I saw, you know, and could have bought, and also the one that I rode in did not have the script in white, it was just bumper color. But uh, again, this looks really cool. Uh, tail lights look fantastic, you can even see the uh, the rear hatch lock, which looks really good as well. Uh, and the exhaust pipes look good too. Um, and of course, it has the requisite groovy 70s louvers here. Uh, you know, cover in the back, okay. so uh, those are detailed well also. Here's the, uh, here's the trunk. This right here is a piece of fabric. It actually unzips, and that's where the storage space is for your luggage. The engine is located under this, uh, in real life, a fiberglass cover that's, uh, um, you know, covered with vinyl or carpet or something. And then here, there's the engine. I believe this is a Renault-sourced engine, and uh, detail isn't bad. Uh, being it's a mid-engine car, you, you know, there's not the greatest view of things, but it looks pretty good. Okay, and uh, now let's uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, interior here. Now, this is tough. These, if I told you the detail on this model is really really good and one of the things is the shut lines are super super tight so I actually have to use a knife blade to get in here so let's go ahead and pop this door open here some of you are probably cringing while I'm doing this uh, but there's the passenger side because this is a right hand drive car detail in there looks really really good you can even see the uh, ashtray there on the sill um, the interior is flocked as you can see uh, uh, by the uh, red carpet there and the detail on the seat is actually pretty good um, hard to tell but the the seats kind of look kind of poofy uh, when you get in them there they're sort of this plush almost sofa-like appearance, but they are uh, very comfortable and they are uh, pretty uh, pretty well supportive there for you when you're driving it. Now let's see if I can get this other side open so we can actually look at the uh, the rest of the interior here. Oh my goodness. Almost there. Here we go. Oh, jeez, that's tight. 
Okay. Again, uh, there is the detail on the dash. The shifter looks really good. The uh, little sort of uh, box-like console for the um, the instrumentation is of a good detail. And uh, there you go. There's your ashtray again as well. Uh, so, uh, interestingly, it does not have um, seat belts. But uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's because they didn't have seat belts back then <laughs> or uh, if this just wasn't built this model was built without seat belts but again really really nice detail let me go ahead and bring this in closer here so you can see but yeah it looks really good and again it's just a a lovely model uh, so um, that's pretty much it um, just to let you know here um, the designer of the uh, the Esprit, uh, actually one of the other designers, uh, was a guy who was a taller gentleman. Uh, the 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 one who actually designed the dimensions of the car, and so you can actually uh, I'm six foot one and I could fit in it just fine. Uh, and uh, the only problem was that. When uh, my friend and I took this car out for the drive, we stopped off at a convenience store and bought a couple of bottles of soda. Uh, and then, uh, you know, he was taller than me actually, and he was driving. And when we both got down to the bottom of our soda bottles, we tipped the bottle up to get the dregs out, and the, bo and the bottle hit the roof of the interior of the car. We literally had to like turn our heads sideways so we could get the rest of the stuff out of the bottle. So it's, that just goes to show you that, although it fit tall people, it was still kind of tight. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you did, please like and, uh, you know, sign up for my channel. And thanks for watching Chuck's Diecast Car and Model Reviews.